So in high school, uh, I ended up getting into different drugs, opiates and whatnot, and that just kind of spiraled out of control. I wasn't raised like that in any sense for my parents. Like they always taught me to uh, be good. By the time I was 16, 17, different legal troubles, I ended up uh, getting placed in a Renaissance campus, which is an inpatient rehab facility. Got out of Renaissance House when I was 17. After six months there, got right back into the same lifestyle I was living prior to that. And I knew I just couldn't keep living the way I was living. And uh, I went up to the, you know, the judge or whoever it was at that point and just said, like, I can't do this. And I was just tired. And, uh, and this was only, I was only 17 years old. There's a couple guys that started like, bought me a Bible, told me to read my Bible. I talked to him late at night of just about scripture and I had no understanding of it. But it was at that time after getting out, I didn't have, my parents didn't want me at home. So I ended up going to a supportive living house or halfway house. And in that time of living there at this supportive living house and, you know, starting to get some relationship back with family, my brother started to um, come to the chapel. He came, I think somebody invited him one day. He ended up giving his life to the Lord on a Sunday. He started to ask me like different questions. I'd be like, okay, well, you just gotta be a good person. You don't really need Jesus. Just be a good person and, and live right. And he's like, well, what's good? What's right? I think that really got me to think a lot about uh, my life and how do I define what is good? How do I define what is right? So my brother kept inviting me to Vintage. Um, I was still, I wasn't using, I was, you know, had a good group of friends. Uh, that night, um, they preached on Rahab and the spies and how God spared Rahab and gave her a new name and a new life. Uh, they prayed for me and I, that was the day I received the Lord. And then from there, from the vintage days, I got in an e-group, um, a couple of, like different, you know, different groups. I went here and then I ended up being in a group with my brother and some of his, the guys that were in his as well. That was kind of where the idea of community, small group was pushed on me. Like guys that we can confess and serve with. And then I found how like God would shift me away from some of these old people that weren't following the Lord and gave me a whole new like base and a whole new group of people to uh, encourage me and serve with. So that was, you know, that was a huge turning point in my life. Through a weird sort of series of events, uh, I got a job at a painting company. Little did I know the painting company was also the warehouse where Potter's Hands was uh, was placed and the guy who hired me he said hey Potter's Hands is here if you want to take a couple hours out of your week you know you can serve in Potter's Hands help organize it you know there's really nobody doing it at that time and it all just kind of worked out together and then I was serving in Potter's Hands for the last probably eight years I would say Sean just came to me, said, hey, there was, there's a need at Potter's Hands. Do you, do you want to do this, like get our small groups together to go and fill this need and go out and deliver furniture on Saturdays? Uh, we sent out a big message to both groups and everybody was pretty into it. It was, a, it, was, it was a really easy yes for everybody. And some of the things I would say that are, that have come out of him a lot since he's come to faith is this deep desire to serve other people. Maybe that was always there, but God really, God really brought that out of him. Prior to me receiving Christ, there was numerous people in my life that were sharing with me about Jesus, not just inviting me to church, but actually sharing with me about the Lord and teaching me different things. Uh, so I would say, in my life now, I still t take that and try to do that with people. It's not just an invite to church, but it's having community with people who aren't even in the church and investing in their lives and sharing with them and answering questions they might have. I would say serving shows that you're invested. When you take a Saturday morning out of your day to go help someone you don't even know, and I think when people see that, it takes it to the next level as opposed to me just asking 
you know, giving a simple invite to church, which is great. But uh, I think that's more of the end of it. I think it starts with serving people and investing in their lives and then bringing them along in your journey of, of faith.